Hello and welcome to our week one content video for teaching culturally and linguistically diverse students. For this week, we're going to look at being purposeful. How do we create opening experiences and an online learning environment that's interactive and meaningful? For each of the activities designed throughout this course, please remember that I've really tried to make sure to engage you in identifying, self-identifying and self-reflection. We really want to make sure we're honoring your families, cultures, and language. I'm going to help you negotiate your identity in this world, particularly when it comes to teaching in an elementary classroom. Hopefully you'll connect and wonder about the identities of others, affirm who they are as individuals and as future students from diverse backgrounds, speak their truths and accept what others say as their truth. So hopefully you can speak your truth but still be respectful understanding of others and what they believe their truth is. And then co-construct what it looks and feels like to share the planet with other human beings. This is taken from um, Being the Change by um, the author Ahmed, 2018. Very important, I think, to start our course with being purposeful and thinking about these things within our own classrooms. In addition, as I shared with you in our um, introductory video, the theoretical framework for this course is the conceptual eye, which consists of three main parts, the personal lens, the CRT educator lens, and the systemic institutional lens. These first couple weeks, we're going to focus on the personal lens, do some activities to help you get at surface culture, shallow culture, and deep culture, and look at what that means to you and how you um, view these elements within your own lives. So to get us started, we're going to do identity webs. Um, according to the book Being the Change, identity webs are personalized graphic tools that help us consider the many factors that shape who we are. So I know a lot of you have probably done something similar to this, but for this class um, we're going to put it in a concrete format. And I have an example here of my identity web. So I'd like to share with you what I put and then I'd like to encourage you to create your own identity web being as creative as possible and thinking about some of those elements in chapter one that are discussed from your reading as well. So let me start off. My name again is Dr. Perez. Um, I'll start with this first one, which I think is the most important. I'm a wife and I'm a mother. I have lots of pets. We have two dogs, Cookie and then Hershey Kiss. So Hershey is our second dog. And then we have three cats, TJ, who's named after um, a cat we used to have, Thomas, and he's Thomas Jr., so TJ. Then we have Snickers, a tortoise hair kitten, looks a lot like a Snickers bar. And then Latte is our Siamese cat who looks kind of like a Latte because he's brown and white. Um, I'm from a family with mother and father. I had one sister, four brothers and me. Um, some of my hobbies include movies, puzzles, and friends. Hanging out with them, of course. And I'm originally from Utah. I put some mountains here because that's where I was born and raised. I lived in a rural part of Utah called Roosevelt where we had lived on a farm. Um, we had to take a bus to school. There was one stoplight. And then I've also lived in an urban part of Utah, which is Salt Lake City, the capital, where I attended high school. I was a JV cheerleader and a gymnast in high school. Then I moved to Kansas where I got my doctorate. Um, so let's jump over here to my education degrees. So I have a bachelor's in elementary education with a minor in Spanish from the University of Utah. Um, I have a master's degree in culture with an emphasis in ESL from the University of Utah. And then I got my PhD in curriculum instruction with emphasis on literacy and ESL here at Kansas State University. Um, I'm an author of several books, and I am also, when it comes to traits, I feel like I'm a loyal person. I've been married 25 plus years. I'm dedicated. I've been with Kansas State University tw over 20 years, and I'm sincere. I feel like I do try to get to know my students, colleagues, family, and friends and be very sincere with them. When it comes to my culture, my husband is Mexican. Our daughter we adopted from Guatemala. 
Uh, my parents, my mom was Mexican and my father was Spanish, so I consider myself Hispanic and love tamales. It's one of the things I have there. Um, I'm also a survivor. I've had lots of health issues. Um, I've overcome breast camp cancer. I had chemo, mastectomy, chemo, and more radiation. Um, I've had a couple of back surgeries, which has rendered me permanently handicapped. Um, so I do have that designation on my car because I can't walk more than, you know, 10, 15 minutes from my um, left leg goes completely numb. And then I've had multiple kidney stone surgeries, um, so lots of medical kind of things going on, but through all of it, I feel like I'm a survivor and have overcome that. So a lot of information here on my identity web. You can see I've included visuals as well. I would encourage you to do that on yours. Um, but take a minute before you move on to start creating your identity web and think about, do you have any connections to me? Like, are you a sister? Are you a mother? Are you um, a survivor? Did you ever participate in high school sports? Um, and what might you include in your web from some of the examples I've included? All right, now it's going to be your turn to make your identity web. Um, you can refer back to my web for ideas, but feel free to add information or categories specific to you. Um, when making your web, please be sure to use a large piece of construction paper or two 8 by 11 sheets of paper taped together. Um, when you're done with your identity web, you're going to upload a picture under the identity web assignment tab. And make sure the picture of your identity web is clear and that you upload it by the due date, which you'll notice is in our course schedule. All right, moving on, um, I want you to think about the identity web after you've completed it. Um, what do you see as some of the benefits for doing identity webs with your future elementary students? What are some adaptations you might make if you were to implement this in your future classroom? For example, doing it with kindergartners versus sixth graders, you're going to have to make some adaptations. And do you think identity webs can be used with all elementary students? Would it work K through 6? So ponder those questions, kind of think about that as you finish up the process of making your web and uploading it. Um, another thing I really want to emphasize and is going to be important to me is to make sure to celebrate name identity. So um, when introducing myself to you, I said my name was Dr. Perez. Um, a lot of times Dr. Perez is what you'll hear because people don't know how to say it with the accent. Either way is fine with me. Um, but you need to make sure when talking to your students and finding out their names, what their, what name they prefer and how they prefer it be pronounced, particularly when you have a class rich in diverse names. Um, also, celebrating my identity when you want to connect with students and among students, that's really important. Helps you also build understanding and empathy for a particular group of people. And when reading a story with names that may be new to students, again, you want to really focus on making sure the pronunciation is correct to introduce that to your students. And then even at parent night, you can have parents share the story of their child's name. How did they get it? For example, my name, um, I was named after my grandmother. And then my daughter, we named her after both of her grandmothers. So Ruth after my mom. And then Thea is the middle name of her, my husband's mother. So Ruth Thea is her name. So kind of getting that story of how people got their names is really important. I want to do a quick little story here to get you a sense of why we want to really celebrate students' names and the power of that. Um, this is from a book called My Name is Jorge on both sides of the river. Their poems in English and Spanish. What I really like is on this other side of the page, which you can't see, the poem is in Spanish. So if you have bilingual children, you could read it in Spanish. I'm going to read you the English version, though, and this poem is called T-Shirt. Teacher, George, please call me Miss Roberts. Yes, teacher. George, please don't call me teacher. Yes, t I mean Miss Roberts. You see, George, it's a sign of respect to call me by my last name. Yes, Miss Roberts. Besides, when you say it, it sounds like T-shirt. I don't want to turn into a t-shirt. Miss Roberts? Yes, George? Please call me Jorge. So take a minute to think about that. What was the power of that poem? 
How is Jorge's name part of his identity? How, by the teacher not respecting that, is she disrespecting who he is? And what is she doing when she's demanding that he call her by her first, by her last name? Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in most Hispanic cultures or most um, Latin cultures, calling a teacher by maestro, maestra, profesora, profesor, that's a sign of respect, not calling them by their last name. So Jorge was actually being very respectful. She just didn't understand that as a teacher, Miss Roberts. So really thinking again about some of these cultural issues, the power of names, and how it's not only tied to our identity, but our culture as well. All right, for this next um, activity, we're going to do identity poems. And again, according to the book Being the Change, identity poems are a window into the lives of your students, a stepping tor stone towards rapport and mutual respect in your future classroom. So identity poems are going to get at a deeper level of understanding and knowledge of your students um, beyond the identity web. It's kind of like the second step. So you're going to have a template to follow, and you'll just fill in the template. Um, I want to show you or read to you my identity poem so you get a sense of who I am and how I completed my poem. You'll submit a typed version of your poem online under the identity poem assignment tab. But here is my identity poem, and here's a picture of my family and me. This is from high school. So I'm here, my sister, my four brothers right here, my dad, and my mom. Okay, I am from Comal, from Maseca, and Rancheros. I am from the thump thump of fresh tortillas being made at 6 a.m. I'm from Lilacs, the weeping willow whose long limbs I remember as if they were my own. I'm from Navidad and Midnight Mass, from Ruth and Benny Espinoza. I'm from Tough Love and Yelling and from the smoke of my father's cigarettes. I'm from Respect Your Elders and Children Should Be Seen and Not Heard, and I Love You A Lot Forever. I'm from Sunday Mass and Altar Service. I'm from Salt Lake City in Mexico, Spain, the United States, and from Tortillas and Rice and Beans. I'm from Pancho Villa and my grandfather who knew where to find his treasure. I'm from family portraits and my mother's final letter to me that I keep in my bedside table. I'm from a proud Latina family filled with history, laughter, and love. So I know we're not together and can't really talk about this as a group, but I did want to go over a few things you may not know. Um, Comal, that's the brown, no, I'm sorry, that's the black pan they usually use to make tortillas on. It's kind of like a, oh, cast iron little pan. That's what a comal is. And then maseca is like the masa you use to make tamales. And rancheros are specific sign of, kind of uh, Mexican music that my father would listen to all the time. Uh, my mother would always get up on the weekends at 6 a.m. and make us fresh tortillas. Best thing ever. And then, um, let's see, the other thing I wanted to share with you, the altar service. When I was young um, and lived in a small rural town, Roosevelt, Utah, I was able, because I was Catholic, I was able to c do altar service, but then a creed came down from the church that the girls couldn't do it. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore, and girls can do altar service today. Um, and then the other thing I want to explain is the Pancho Villa. My grandfather, my father's, my mother's dad, um, used to insist that his grandfather knew Pancho Villa and was part of his gang. And he always told my dad that he knew where the treasure was buried and he wanted to go to Mexico to dig up this treasure. My dad's like, ah, I don't think so. So, but yeah, that's my grandfather's story about Pancho Villa. So hopefully my identity poem gives you an idea of kind of how you can get at a deeper level getting to know people. Um, you are going to complete your identity poem and share it so I can get to know you a little bit better. Um, I'm looking forward to reading these. They're great. Um, give me lots of wonderful insight. And I hope it's something you find meaningful as well. So you're going to use the template provided in the week one course module to write your poem. When you're done, just type up your completed poem and upload it under the Identity Poem Assignments tab. If you want to add a visual to that like I did, that would be great, but not required. 
And then just some final reminders uh, for this first week. We're going to keep it short. Um, we'll, next week's video will be a little bit longer and involve a little bit more. But for this week, just make sure you complete your identity web and identity poem and upload them before the next class. You'll see those due dates on the assignment tab. Make sure to sign up for the discussion board under the pages tab on Canvas. Um, discussion boards will start week two, so you want to make sure you sign up this week. If you don't sign up this week, I'll assign you a discussion board topic. And then you want to complete your CLD bio survey uh, before the next class. Again, that will help give me some great insights so that I can help to shape um, the rest of the course as we proceed. So thank you so much for your time and attention this week one. I hope you got some good insights. Um, we're going to do some fun activities. And I look forward to seeing your completed product products. I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a great rest of the day. Stay safe and stay warm.